Google Maps is turning 20 this year. Happy birthday. In two decades, we've gone from this to this. What was once a tool reserved for an elite few is now accessible for free to over a billion monthly users. It's become as simple as flipping a switch. But how does it actually work? What happens when we move from point A to point B? What's going on when we search for restaurants? How did Google Maps map out the world and beyond? Hi, I'm Francois from Scrub.io and today we are diving into how Google Maps works. Did you notice? On Google Maps, you have two types of maps, the default view and the satellite view. This is where the magic happens. A combination of multiple satellite images makes it possible to create this global picture. If you look closely, there is an annotation in the bottom right corner. Terra metrics. But wait, what is that? Turns out it's a mapping company. And here, we have NASA. And there, Landsat Copernicus, another mapping company. Google doesn't initially own the satellite images. Often, these images come from companies that sell them to others or to governments. Now, let's zoom in a little. We then have access to a more surprising source, Airbus. That's right. Images of Earth also come from photos taken by aircrafts. It's hard to grasp the feet behind these images. They come from various sources taken at different times with different settings and all these parts need to be combined into one coherent wall that's the real tour de force of google maps that was for the view from above now let's get a bit more down to earth the image you see here comes from Street View. Created in 2007, Street View uses a technique called photogrammetry. Armed with Google Cars topped with a 360 degree camera, you have probably spotted one before. Add LiDAR sensors and a GPS, and you get a complete snapshot of your surroundings at a given moment. This time, the source is often found in the top left, typically labeled as Google Street View. But it's not always a Google car. Depending Depending on the terrain, they adapt. The car might be replaced by a backpack, a bag, a snowmobile, a camel, a diver, or even an astronaut. Granted, the astronaut is rarer than the backpack, but it gives you a glimpse into Google's ambition. So, what happens when we plot a route on Google Maps? Typically, we enter our current location. I will touch on that later, since location sharing raises some privacy concerns, and it's understandable why Google Maps has had some issues there. Back to our route. We get an estimate based on our mode of transport. What's important to understand here is that a lot of data layers are in play. First, traffic data. We all know that a route will probably take less time on a Sunday at 4 a.m. than on a Tuesday at 6 p.m. The same goes for public transport. Here data comes from municipal sources. And I'm not just talking about the various metro stations, but also any potential service interruptions. Finally, there is data from us the users. When we go somewhere, Google Maps might ask for our feedback on the crowd density. This accumulation of data over years helps identify patterns and create predictions. So we can estimate the travel time if I decide to leave the next day at 8 a.m. We have covered a lot already, but there is one more key player, and it's a big one. When we type into the search bar, it's either to get directions or to find a list of businesses. In this case, Google Maps transforms into a search engine, and that's what it does best. The top results are always the most complete and rich by users for reviews, peak hours, and over details, but especially by the businesses themselves. If you see claims this business, it means the business hasn't taken control of its profile. They can reclaim it by creating an account on Google Business Profile. Once that's done, they are free to update their information. They can add a website, phone number, opening hours, photos, 
responses to reviews, details, and more. In total, there are 200 million businesses on Google Maps. Imagine writing a 2 followed by 8 zeros and a check, it wouldn't even fit. All of this is divided into 4,000 different business categories, primarily small and medium-sized enterprises. If this data collection interests you and you need it for your next prospecting campaign, head over to Scrap.io. Scrap.io is the ultimate tool for scraping, for extracting data from Google Maps. Very easy to use, you simply insert a category and a location, et voila, I have access to my data. This data can be filtered, for example, I can have access to only data including one email address, and all that remains to do is to download my CSV or Excel file. By clicking the link in the description, you can get your first 100 leads free of charge. That's it for this video. Yet there is still so much more to discuss and we are left with more questions than answers. If we can look at your house via satellite view, that's not always a good thing. I don't know about the USA or the UK, but I know for the fact that in France, government uses Google Maps to track down undeclared pools or garden sheds. And if you are being watched, that's obviously for your own good. Isn't it? Yet governments can borrow certain sensitive areas for obvious security reasons. So it makes you wonder why it's impossible as an individual to blow your home for the satellite view. This time, that's truly it. If you are interested in scraping Google Maps, you can check scrap.io or click the link in the description. Thank you for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, as usual, subscribe. There is nothing else to see. The end.